الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa taala. May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon His servant and final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. As to what follows, my dear respected brothers in Islam, just a very short reminder. Allah subhanahu wa taala. He says at the end of سورة الأنعام. He says قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين. Allah Azza wa Jal commanded the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say to the people, "Yani inna salati wa nusuki certainly my prayers and my nusuk, which is the sacrifice, or it could also mean the nusuk of the Hajj, the rituals that the the, the pilgrim performs, wa mahiya wa mamati, and my life and my death, Lillahi Rabbi Alamin. It all belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Lord of the Worlds. Mamati, my death is for Allah." Ulama rahimahumullah, they said that death is two types. The first one is when one sleeps, that's considered death, but it's called a minor death. And the other death is the major death, obviously when the soul now goes and it doesn't return until the day of judgment. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Al-Zumar, Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha wal-lati lam tamut fi manamiha. That's the ayah in which it teaches us that sleeping is death, it's known as a minor death, uh, and the major death is about to come for everyone, and that's what's meant with Qawli Ta'ala, Kullu Nafsin Dhaiqatul Mawt. Fa'al-Ulama Rahimahumullah, they said uh, that your death is for Allah. Uh, of course, the major death, how does one make that for Allah Azza wa Jal? The fact that he lives a life of Tawheed, the fact that he lives a life of La ilaha illallah, and he dies upon La ilaha illallah, then such a person has been granted a death, and that death is for Allah. Okay, sleep now, this sleep. How do you make your sleep, Lillah? No, he said, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ يعني My sleep as well is for Allah. How does one make his sleep for Allah? The ulama, rahimahum Allah, they said that he makes the last thing he mentions before he sleeps, ذِكْرُ Before he sleeps, the last thing he sleeps upon is ذِكْرُ which is أَذْكَارُ No. So as he's sleeping, He's sleeping upon the last thing he said with his mouth, the last thing he uttered on his tongue is dhikrullah, and that is the dhikr before you sleep. That such a person has accomplished uh, mamati lillah, he's accomplished that his sleep is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let me just uh, share with you يعني, exactly what is supposed to be said at night. And I, I know, of course, يعني, I've got to know uh, plenty, but uh, يعني, you, should, you should focus at least on three. Number one is that you say Sayyidul Istighfar. Very important. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdika wa adika mustatat. A'udhu bika min sharri ma salat. Abu laka bin imatika alayk wa abu bi dhambi faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhuruba illa ant. This one, a complete forgiveness happens with it. Then this is Sayyidul Istighfar. This is the perfect and the most complete and best way of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. If that's the last thing you're saying before you sleep and you die during that sleep, then alhamdulillah. Oh, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the one who says it in the evening and die, and he's certain about it, and he dies before the morning, he enters the paradise. Dakhar al-Jannah, hadith sahih, in sahih al-Bukhari. This is one. Never ever let it go. Number two is that you recite ayat al-Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illa wa al-hayyul qayyum until wa huwa al-aliyu al-azim. You reach the end of it. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith, he says, يعني لا يزال عليك حافظ من الله حتى تصبح. Upon this person remains a guardian, someone that would guard him until the morning, and that is the angel that would guard him. In fact, you have a protection that Allah Azza wa Jal has given. And the last thing, the third one, this is the minimal and the least of what you're going to do, is to recite Surah Al Mulk. Surah Al Mulk. Very important. يعني Surah Al Mulk. What does it do? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says in the Hadith that Shafaat li Rajul hatta ghafarat lahu. It will keep interceding for this person until it forgives him. So it becomes a source of an intercession for you on the day of judgment. And it is a source of forgiveness for you on the day of judgment. And in another hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches that is, he says, He al mani'atu tabna'u min adhab al qabr. Where subhanallah, it prevents one from being punished in the grave. For if you were to die that night, then look at the goodness that you died upon. You died while making your 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 sleep for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The ulama, يعني هما there's a hadith hadith of Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه. And I just this is a this is an incredible narration. He says that when the person dies and he's put in his grave, it's got to do with the hadith Surah Al-Mulk. That when he's put in his grave, 
he says, يأتيه أو يؤتى من قبل رجلي. The punishment will come from his feet. And the punishment wants to get him from his feet. So his foot and his feet would say, ليس عليكم ما قبل سبيل. كان يقرأ سورة الملك. They would say to the angel that wants to come and punish, there's no access from here because he used to read Surah Al-Mulk. So they're not able to access from his foot. They go all the way. So then the punishment would come and it's now it wants to attack him from his chest or his, uh, his stomach in this area. So then that would say as well, You cannot come in from here. There's no access. He used to read Surah Al-Mulk. And then yeah, it's like it's doing a bow. The punishment will come from his head. And his head would say, Laysa alaykum ma qibali sabil kara yaqa'u surat al-mulk. He cannot access from here. He used to read surat al-mulk. And then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Hiya al-mani'a tamna'u min a'zaab al-qabr. He said, this surah is the preventer. It prevents from the punishment of the grave. And he says, subhanallah, a surah that is two and a half pages, 30 ayat, it was enough to ward away the punishment from the person in his grave. But I imagine yani, the one who, who reads the entire Qur'an, the one who has a relationship with the entire Qur'an. But now, what, what's going to happen to this person in his grave? If only two and a half pages did that for him. So, yani, no doubt, a relationship with the Qur'an is very important. Before you sleep, uh, read some Qur'an, at least you're reading Surah Al-Mulk, Ayat Al-Kursi, and uh, Sayyid Al-Istighfar. And before you sleep, uh, yani, of course, you pray. You pray Salat Al-Wutr, pray something. You know, once you sleep, then the soul that slept upon worship is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it leaves the, the body. Well, everyone, when you sleep, your soul comes out of your body. So the one who slept upon a ta'a, upon a prayer, upon dhikr, his, his, his soul is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than the one who, who sleeps يعني, on his WhatsApp, on his Facebook, and then يعني, subhanAllah, his, his WhatsApp put him to sleep. And then where's his soul going to be when he comes out of his body? For this person is upon danger. So this is why the Messiah came to teach us Adhkar al nawm to teach us these ahadith, not for the sake of just repeating them and mentioning them. Use them and make a habit in every single day, every night before you sleep. Get used to it, get your family used to it, and you will see its reward on the Day of Judgment. Well, you just have to believe and certain in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala's promise. If you're certain about Allah's promise, or certain about what the Prophet ﷺ said to us, then what holds you back? What holds you back? The ahadith are not there just to look for and to look at and listen to. Yeah, they're there to implement and to, they're not only information, but they're there for transformation. They're going to transform you into a better person, into someone who is closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to benefit from the ahadith and to implement them in our life. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the Qur'an, people who benefit from the reminders of the Qur'an. Inna huwa liyudhalika wa qadiru alayhi. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ameen.